On this edition of NSFW Show, we are joined by legendary actor of The Walking Dead, Mole Rats, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, Michael Rucker joins us yet again! We talk about Merle Dixon, his character on The Walking Dead, and what happened to him between the last time we saw him in season one and when and if we'll see him on season two. We also talk about our brand new comedy album, which is number one on Amazon, Night Attack. All that, including musical guest Alex Brubaker, coming up on this edition of NSFW Show. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 97. The Beavers are just for pleasure. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high quality website or blog. For a free trial and 20% off your new account for six months, go to squarespace.com and use offer code NSFW10. And Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly, all streamed directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. Oh, oh my gosh, here it is. Here, huh? okay. Gonna dig it in here. Uh, Mia's tooth. Yes. I'm All so right. excited to shoot my That's tooth. That's an actual tooth? Yeah. There you Chad, go. Chad, start opening video. <laughs> Here's the tooth. Hey. Play the music. There's a tooth embedded in a zombie that a oh, no. worker will shoot. And I'm very excited about it. Okay, I'm about to shoot that tooth. All right, let's do it. Let's shoot that zombie you ready? tooth. Yes. We're at 21 feet. 21 feet, shooting a tooth. Trying to get that tooth. Da -da 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 -da. Drum roll. This. Let's do it again. Gone. You got the tooth. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yes. You were the tooth. Don't steal. This that's is the it, happiest that's day of my life. Show. Start the show. Start the show. Stop that! Is an intro, ladies and gentlemen. It's NSFW. The new show full of wit. The new songs for the web. That's the show that is nominally safe for work. I'm your host, Trent Rushman, joined as always by the indivisible co-hosts, but Justin Robert Young, the third one is going on, Professor J.R.Y. Oh, uh, Brian, you have no idea, dear listeners, the kind of pain that we have had to trudge through to bring you this very episode. Not technical delays, rain delays, a huge debut for our, our comedy album could stop us from bringing you this episode of NSFW Show featuring, uh, you know, a guest who really needs no introduction. So I will simply say, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Rooker is here Huzzah! on the show. How you doing, Rooker? Right on, brother. I'm doing fine. How you guys? Uh, dude, you've been a whirlwind. You've been all over the place. I know we tried to get you last night, but you had a hard out. We had technical difficulties, and finally it was just like, look, we can either get 10 minutes of a rook, or we can delay a day and actually hang out with you for a full-scale adventure. Uh, what are you up to right now? Uh, a, bunch, a bunch of stuff. I'm uh, doing uh, some voiceover work for a, a new game I can't talk about. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, and... and uh, I, um, I'm uh, talking to uh, a couple of agents out here in uh, L.A. that uh, they're uh, kissing my ass. I don't know why, but uh, maybe it's <laughs> has something to do with The Walking Dead and some of the projects I've just been in lately. So we'll see. Are there, uh, now speaking of The Walking Dead, is there anything that you can confirm about The Walking Dead, maybe specifically your character from last season? 
I can confirm, absolutely confirm, that The Walking Dead begins its premiere on the 16th. <laughs> You heard it here first, people. Rest straight from Michael Rooker. You can confirm that The Walking Dead begins this Sunday on AMC. Uh, look, Justin, here's the thing. Look, you yeah. and I, we clearly have one favorite character from The Walking Dead show. You and I both love the exploits of one Merle Dixon. Now, we don't know yeah. if he's coming back for season two. We have our strong... No, listen, yeah, when, when, when we, laugh le uh, we last left... Our, our good friend, the uh, coke-snorting, slur-popping, uh, one-armed racist Merle Dixon, he had stolen a van and driven away from the rest of our survivors. We don't know whether or not they're going to run back into him, but we do know that he's gone, and we do know that, you know, something has to have happened because he's, he's escaped. Well, let's do this. Here's the thing. We don't know if he's going to come back, so wherever he is right now, assuming he does come back, I got to assume he's going to have some kind of adventures on the road. The sort of the adventures of Merle Dixon out there, you know, uh, shooting for survival, working on his gangrenous arm, like trying to find oh, antibiotics and tar or whatever. And so, why don't we write a little bit of fan fiction with the help of Michael Rooker? How can we do that? Uh, Brian, number one, I don't think we're writing fan fiction. We are writing absolute canon. <laughs> This is going to exactly be what is what has happened. Now, now, if I can just uh, uh, Rooker, if I can just kind of tap very briefly in, 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 in into the mind of, of of Merle before we even get into the story, uh, where where is Merle's uh, mindset? You know, right after uh, escaping with the, uh, the the van and everything, is he a little angry? Is he bitter? Is he happy that he escaped even without one arm? Where, where's where's Merle's mindset? Do you think? Merle, Merle is not a very happy camper. Merle feels betrayed. Merle feels as though uh, the world is against him and all the survivors are definitely against him. They never liked him to begin with. And even though he probably ser uh, he serviced them by, by hunting and bringing in food for the group and whatnot, they, you know, every now and then he'd get a little high but uh, and, and spout off his <laughs> mouth. But, the, you know... Uh, that's not so, such a big deal, but he, I guess that the, the the moment you see Merle in the beginning of the first season, you know, he's just had enough. You yeah, know, yeah, everyone's yeah. bossing him around, trying to tell him to do stuff he doesn't want to do. He's just had enough of these people, you know? And that yeah. was it. So where the audience comes in and you see Merle for the first time. And, of course, the last moment you see Merle, uh, the zombies are about to eat him and... and um, he decides to, a um, uh, big spoiler here, if, if uh, uh, some of our European fans over there have not seen the first season yet, too bad. He cuts off his hand <laughs> <laughs> and escapes. <laughs> yes. And steals yes. the van. And, okay. of course, you already said all that. And, uh, and uh, yeah, no, he's, he's, not, uh, he's not happy with any of the stuff that went down, no. All right, all right. So, so uh, uh, Brian, you, you, do, do, do we want to do the zoo story? Uh, yeah, okay, so here's the thing. We have a plan. We want to make this fair. Uh, this is a bit of role play. Uh, I insist that this is fan fiction. Justin insists that this is canon. We'll have to get Kirkman on to decide which is which. But uh, what we've done is we, we're going to adapt. We're going to do a choose-your-own-adventure story that uh, we're going to adapt, and we're going to place, if you don't mind role-playing Merle Dixon, uh, in this situation and tell us what would Merle Dixon do in this choose your own adventure story called a trip to the zoo. So we're going to walk you through everything. All you got to do is tell us what Merle Dixon would do. And we'll do our best to try to color this children's story as accurately to the walking dead as possible. You want to start us off, Justin? As long as we can keep it clean. It is a children's story, right? <laughs> yes, yes, sure. yes. Well, uh, yeah, no, I'm almost positive that there's no way that a story called A Trip to the Zoo could be anything other than a purely innocent children's story. That's so, right. uh, I, I so here we go. Uh, you build up an urge to go to the zoo, Merle. You know that you do not have a car, but you know that the neighbor has a car. Your urge is real bad, and you head toward your neighbor. Before you get... To, uh, before you get to the front door of your neighbor's house, you saw your neighbor murdered his wife through the window. <laughs> this concerns you and you get a little scared. You decide to knock on the door anyway and act like you did not see anything. Your neighbor opens the door holding a bloody knife. You seem to be even more frightened. 
You still ask your neighbor to borrow his car. Uh, oh, sorry. Do you ask to borrow his car or do you run away scared of your neighbor? Uh, Merle, that is your choice. Do you still ask to borrow the car or do you uh, run away scared? Merle doesn't run away scared, first off. You got to get that straight. And Merle <laughs> does not ask to borrow some uh, uh, spousal murderer abuser's car. <laughs> Merle will take the knife, shove it up his sphincter, and take the car and the keys and uh, drive off to the zoo. Okay. Okay. So, uh, well, we're we're going to file this. that one. Ask yeah, him, think, we're going to mark that one as ask to borrow the, the neighbor's car. Okay. So Merle <laughs> Dixon, blood harmed. Goes in there. Okay, I'll sees, keep it simple for you. Sees, sees, a, sees, no, this is great. So he goes in, he sees this terrible murder, uh, and, and after slaughtering this individual, he turns and he asks to borrow the neighbor's car, and the neighbor shuts the door on you. Apparently the corpse <laughs> shut the door. Oh, you must have killed the corpse, came back as a zombie, and then the zombie rudely shut the door on you. And so then he gets aggravated about how rude the neighbor was in zombie form. You decide to wait for your neighbor. 20 minutes later, your neighbor comes back to let you in. Your neighbor offers you a cup of coffee. You accept the cup off of, of coffee uh, so your neighbor does not get mad because he's a zombie offering you coffee. Your neighbor leaves for a minute. At the same time, you hear a lock click. And you, you didn't then realize you are stuck in the house and need to get out. You ask to use the bathroom. Your zombie neighbor tells you that the bathroom is down the hall to the left. On the way to the bathroom, you notice a door that has exit written on it. You wonder if that really is an exit or not. So Merle Dixon, would he continue to the bathroom or enter the door that says exit? Hey, you know what? You got to go. You got to go. I'd go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying Merle, Merle Dixon uh, stabs a man in the neck, watches him reanimate as a zombie, uh, a accepts zombie. a cup of coffee <laughs> from the zombie... Uh, and then, cool as a cucumber, bro's got to drain the lizard. He's just going to the bathroom. You got to go. Know? You got to go, bro. That's simple fact. <laughs> it is. It is. All right. It's, we, you well, continue to the bathroom. A lot of people buy their uh, bathrooms, by the way. <laughs> well, there we go. See? That's a Merle Dixon tip that you can take to the bank, friends. Um, <laughs> you walk into the bathroom, Merle, and you notice the a window is open. You look out the window and see outside that there is an escape opportunity. You climb out the window and then you end up falling on top of your neighbor. Your neighbor's, your neighbor's animated corpse, very rudely yes. walking around. Neighbors, your neighbor's, yeah, uh, reanimated corpse is apparently is very paranoid about you escaping the house. Uh, is already <laughs> waiting for you outside, not unlike a cartoon character. Your yes. neighbor grabs the nearest object, which was the bloody knife from earlier, and stabs you in the side. You scream in pain and immediately get off of uh, the neighbor that has uh, uh, jumped on top of you, and you notice a rock and a telephone on a table nearby. Um, this is do important. you? This yeah, is do important. You, do you throw the rock at your neighbor, or do you decide to use the phone? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of phone is it? May I ask uh, a question? It's, it, it's is, it is a, a, a touch. It is a smartphone. Yes, it's a smartphone. Yes, it's a smartphone. Well, as we all know, those smartphones are not that smart. So I don't think I'd go for the phone. I'd go for the rock and smash the wolf on the head. <laughs> <laughs> so you would you you would dash out the brains of this very rude animated neighbor corpse. Uh, okay, here we go. You throw the rock at your neighbor. You pick up the rock, throw it at your neighbor. Your neighbor just laughs at you uh, rudely, since the rock was a stress relief ball. Your neighbor goes to the nearby closet, pulls out a katana. This is a very smart, zombie, rude neighbor you have. You get scared, but cautiously start backing away from him. While backing away, you run into a box. You're not sure what could be in there and wonder if the box is worth opening. Does Merle Dixon open the box or not open the box? I go for the box. That's it. For the record, Merle Dixon goes for the box. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that. yeah, if, if it turns out that Gwyneth Paltrow's head's in this, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> <laughs> you open the box and find a sword. When you pick up the sword, you notice that it's a toy and not an actual sword, and you feel a little shorthanded. Is that the sword of Gryffindor? No, <laughs> it's not, in fact, the sword of Gryffindor pulled from the hat of, of God, of the sorting hat, rather. Um, <laughs> 
you're, uh, you feel a little shorthanded. Your neighbor reaches you and starts swinging his sword to you again. You have no choice but to use the toy as a sword and sword fight your neighbor. The sword fight ends up upstairs and at the balcony. Your neighbor gets the upper hand and pushes you off the balcony, resulting in your death. Um, and so Dave. it's the problem with this whole story. You know, <laughs> Merle is constantly getting abused. What, what's the deal with this? Merle's a good guy. He's, he doesn't deserve all this, all this sh You know? Come on. Give me a break. So for, for, for the sake of the discussion, I mean, clearly that's not the that? end. For Jason. I'd like to think he, he tumbles down and lands like in a big rose bush and then just sort of shuffles off to his next adventure. His trip to the zoo now finally being over. Uh, do, we have, do we have time for one more adventure, Justin? Okay, uh, well, you know, I'll tell play. you what. Go ahead. Okay, let's do another one. We'll do it real quick. Yeah. Well, well, answer well, without do, what, do we... Do, do we do we want to do another one, or do we want to maybe rewind it? Uh, and and obviously we were following the rails of that story. Uh, do we want to just get how it Explo would have happened if if, if this were just path. completely Merle? So you're saying not only do we have fan fiction of what happens to Merle Dixon, now we're going into an alternate history to our fan fiction of Merle Dixon. No, uh, Brian, we what have really canon. Happened? What we really have absolute what canon. Really happen that they're okay. And, fine. No, no, I'm totally down with that. So uh, let's go. Let's go way back to the beginning. Uh, let's say. Let's say he sees this brutal murder, and maybe just maybe Merle Dixon. He's down a hand. He's grumpy. He's tired. He doesn't want to bother with this guy. He, guy wants to murder his wife. Let him murder his wife. You know. You just. You just want to go get his car, right? So maybe we'll mark it as runaway scared, but we're going to call it Merle Dixon's strategic retreat. How about that? Merle Dixon's strategic retreat. Yes. Would be to grab the guy's car and leave? Yes. Yeah, sure. All right. So, All right. So take it away, Justin. Go ahead, So, Jess. Wait, are, are we going back the other way through? What do you want to do, my son? It's I, I went you. back to the beginning, and instead okay, of... Okay, I did not know that you were doing that. <laughs> oh, that, I thought that's what you just suggested. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I was suggesting that we just go, like, from the beginning with Merle, you know, like, like so, so Merle would just, uh, would just, would just... Uh, just destroyed this guy, this wife murderer, right? Okay, and just right. take his car. Uh, Mer will do what I told you he'd do in the first place. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See, that's what I want. I want more of that. So he walks in and just he sees this he guy murk his wife. You want to really know what where Mer would do? This is what Mer would do. He yeah. take the knife, shove it up the guy's finger, push him aside, go in, make himself a cup of coffee, take the coffee, <laughs> use the bathroom, go out the front door, go, uh, go to the garage, get the car, and drive to the zoo. <laughs> and what's, and what's, what's, what's Merle's favorite animal? Oh, uh, uh, a uh, groundhog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so ass assuming it's hard to find a groundhog in the zoo, because I don't know, you, you, well, uh, you, you know, really, a groundhog is a gro oh, uh, like a big giant rodent. Actually, for uh, another big giant rodent would be the beaver. I think Merle is very similar exactly. to a rookery. Merle likes a beaver as well. <laughs> so you think Merle just stands over by the beaver and just in a post-zombie apocalypse just points at the animal and says, <laughs> beaver. <laughs> just nobody else. The entire zoo is abandoned and he's giggling to himself. So what about, uh, what about let's say it's been long enough, you know, you, you, Merle Dixon's been checking out the beaver as long as it's still interesting to him. And then finally he gets a little bit hungry. Does he go, does, does he go slaughter one of the other zoo animals? And if so, which one? Or does he raid like the, the, the rotting hot dogs inside the stand next to him? Well, does he have a weapon? I, uh, he's got, he's got a ground. He would have a weapon, some, some sort of weapon that he's fashioned. Yes. Right? Or we'll maybe say, he's picked up, maybe he's picked up one of those, uh, those MP5s or the uh, uh, ARs, uh, the M16s or the M4s or something like that. All those military people have been uh, have been uh, dropping and uh, dying, and so their guns are laying all over the place. Right? He's probably picked up one or two of those. And now, now is he having a hard time loading and reloading with just the one hand, or is he, or is he just that dexterous? He can, you know. No, you, you could do that. Now you can you can load and unload with one hand. It it, it can it can happen. I have no doubt that you know this personally as a fact. This this yeah. is what I love now, about my life. At some point after he reloads and goes to get food, does he go back to see the beaver just to laugh at it again, or or is he done with the beaver just the one time? 
Yeah, the beavers are just for pleasure, just to look at and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> just really an aesthetic thing. You know, listen, who's going to hang out if you're not going to have a few beavers running around? <laughs> oh, yeah. You gotta, it, it's usually beavers. It's uh, uh, plural because, you know, they work together and they build their little their little uh, home on the Dams. rivers. And stuff. Yeah. yeah. Dams, yes. Uh, so, okay, so so if, if he is going to kill an animal to eat it, which, which one is he going to go for at the zoo? Mm, well, you know what? I'd go for, the, I'd go, I, I like sushi a lot, so I'd go over to the pond and get those koi and, and enjoy myself. Just put a way, you, don't have to start a fire, you don't have to start a fire or cook or anything. <laughs> All right, now, now let me, uh, let's say he eats, right, Merle? And then he's ready to kind of move on. He's kind of exhausted the resources at the zoo. Um, does he take one of the beavers to um, just kind of be his little companion? So the, the next time that we see them uh, on The Walking Dead, it's just Merle and the Beave, you know, uh, going through the rural awesome. south, solving mysteries. That's an awesome idea. Yeah. yeah. I, I think a beaver would make a great pet. Well, all right. I just want to let everybody know that I am sure that we are not going to get any photoshops of Merle Dixon and his new beaver pal as they walk through a post-zombie apocalypse solving mysteries for Merle and the Beave coming this fall to AMC. And I bet you anything we won't see promotional posters and uh, live action trailers cut together from random footage, maybe including the movie with Mel Gibson and, uh, and uh, Michael Rooker as Merle Dixon. Definitely sure won't have so. well, uh, I'm sure of it, yeah. No, no, no. And, and we're definitely not going to see a website dedicated to that very show, uh, MerleandTheBeave.squarespace.com, Brian, right? Uh, we're not going to see that. Now, why do you always got to do this? Everything's got to be a website to you. I don't have money. I don't know HTML. And if I did make a website called MerleandTheBeave.squarespace.com, it would be so popular that it would instantly get reddited and it would get totally brought down by all the insane traffic. Why do we even bring this up? You don't possibly have a solution to fix this. Brian, I have three words for you. What? Shut up, idiot. <laughs> because Squarespace.com is where you need to go right now. It solves all of your problems and six or seven others that you haven't even thought of. You want to know why? The Squarespace what? is smarter than you. Hold on. Hold on. Did you say Squarespace? I've never heard of this before. Listen, uh, let me tell you a little story about a man named Squarespace. All right? Squarespace is a service that was delivered to us by aliens that built the pyramids. Uh, wait, okay? uh, I'm... I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry, it sounded like you said aliens. Aliens built the pyramids. And while they were there, they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, this pyramid stuff. And then they started like, doing the rolling the dice thing. Right, right. Um, like, what we're really here for is to bring you Squarespace, a fantastic way that you can build a website super easy peasy, lemon squeezy, which is something that was their term. That's, that's who invented it. Aliens who built the pyramids and brought us square I nearly did a spit take just then. Remind me not to drink while you're talking. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, they made sure that you could go ahead and without even knowing any kind of HTML or CSS, you can make a beautiful website. They said, hey, we're going to give you a beautiful website. <laughs> ah, that, it's going to look so see. good. You're saying these are they, these are horrific racial stereotype aliens is what they were doing. No, they, they no, no, no. As aliens. But they did say like uh, they were like like, hey, you want to go make a website? This is so easy. Why don't you go on over to squarespace.com and then there you can get the two week of free trial and you don't even need oh you need a credit card you need a credit card eh? forget about it you do not need no credit card. Eh? <laughs> So okay, you guys, uh, did you guys get paid for this? Uh, <laughs> no. No, no, we don't. Uh, so so th this is how we handle all of our sponsors, which is why we're so popular with exactly one of them. Uh, okay, so the, the humans, not yes. having any idea what a, what a website is or telecommunications in the future, they say uh, we would like clean water and food. And what did the aliens say? Uh, yeah, yeah, but you just go get a Squarespace website with the water. Who needs the water? Why do you get it in Squarespace? You like it in Squarespace? In Squarespace.com. You just go set up a website. It'll be done so simple. You can just use offer code NSFW10. Uh, 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 
Mr. Alias, uh, we, we are very, very impressed with your dazzling ships that come from the heavens. We know you are bestowed with powers of the gods. Uh, we, we would like uh, antibiotics. Do you have antibiotics for us? Pew! That's the sound of a laser pistol that evaporates that person because they're not paying attention to squarespace.com. And, and this then, is the moment. This is the moment yeah. that everyone begins to chant the promo code that'll get you 10% off your order at squarespace.com, where they all go NSFW10 over and over and over again as they hail their new robot overlords. Absolutely. Squarespace.com and the bonanza. <laughs> All right, we only have a few more minutes here. We're on super tight schedule, and I'm actually, I haven't even get, get a chance to say this. I'm actually backstage. I'm here at the student activities office in uh, uh, Rowan University. We're just, I'm just about to go on live over there. They were nice enough to let me uh, broadcast from here. But uh, I, did you know, Daddy Rooker, that, that your, your, your adopted son and, and in his idiot friend with the spiky hair made a goofy comedy album? Did you hear about this? I did not hear about this. What's going on with that? Tell me. Okay, this is. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna let your adopted son, uh, your stepson, Justin Robert Young, with beaming pride, tell Daddy Rooker what what he did today. Go on, tell him, Justin. All right. So, uh, Rooker, here's the deal. Uh, we made a comedy album. It's called Night Attack. Basically, what it did is, is it's 13 hours of conversations that me and Brian had. Some of it funny, some of it kind of uh, serious, uh, most of it very, very, very side-splittingly hilarious. A lot of fun stories that uh, you know, I've never told before. There's uh, stories about strip clubs and, and uh, my uncle picking me up at a kindergarten when he was high to take me to play laser tag. Um, and, and we made it into one super tight two-hour album that right now on Amazon is the number one comedy album in the entire country of the United States of America. No, oh, and nobody son, from else. From your description, it should be. <laughs> well, I, I, thank you. But here's the problem. is like, yeah, we're number one now. But, uh, and also, it's, it's only uh, $2. $2. Exactly $2. There it is oh, right wow. there. $1.99. In fact, we just got it all corrected. It was at uh, two fifty nine yesterday because that was the cheapest you could do a two-disc album on Amazon. But now it's down to only $1.99. If you already bought it, what the heck? Just buy it again. You can give it as a gift to a buddy. And uh, you can see right here, we're at this exact moment. We're number six in all MP3 album downloads at uh, Amazon. We got to give a huge thank you to everybody who bought last night when the price dropped. And a huge thank you to John Tilton, who did all the production work on this. Who, uh, who blew this thing up, or I guess we're down to number seven now. Uh, but <laughs> regardless, still awesome. Don't but, worry uh, about it. You, know, you can't stay at number one for, for long and forever. And now, since you guys are pitching all these things, I want to pitch something that I want, I, I've been in. Yes. You know? with. Yeah, and you, and I, you probably already know about it. And I just want to make sure that I remind people that it was a really, really popular map pack for the Call of Duty Black Ops series. Dude, and as a matter yes. of fact, I found out from a friend of mine uh, that it is the most talked about and popular map pack of all the entire series. And it's called Call of the Dead. Yeah. Yeah, now baby. Yeah, you gotta you gotta understand. This is not a case where Michael Rooker just loaned his voice to a random character. This is Michael Rooker playing the actual actor Michael Rooker in a video game, right? That's right. That's right. And, uh, and, and you get to play as Michael Rooker, and you get to play as Sarah Michelle Gellar, uh, Danny Trail, Robert right. England. And George Romero is the boss, and he's constantly chasing after you, trying to hit you over the head with a, a 10K. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Folks who don't know what a 10K is, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a light that people use in the, in the film industry. It's, <laughs> it's called 10K. And well, he's constantly saying stuff like, get back to the green room, <laughs> or, or get back <laughs> over here, the scene's not over, stuff like that. Uh, uh, now, yes. now, hold on. I, I feel like we can do a little a favor for each other here, Rooker. You know, we have a big project that we need a celebrity endorsement for. You have a map pack uh, that's been gi absolutely gigantic for Call of yes. uh, Call of Duty Black Ops. But maybe you want to speak to the gamer community. Uh, maybe, maybe we can we can trade off here a little home and home. If you give us a celebrity endorsement. 
that we can uh, link to for, for the Night Attack album, then, then we'll do a little one for Call of Duty. Because obviously you've seen how well we do sponsor rates. Well, you know what? I think that's a that's a good deal. You know, I, I did grow up in Chicago, and it's, you know, the, the old saying out there, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. So, yes. yeah, I can do that. Exactly. <clears throat> Why don't you guys, uh, I'll, I'll give you uh, that's, that's, that's Just like that old other Chicago saying, pay me my money or I'll kill you. <laughs> or the other, uh, the other one, the most popular one is vote, vote, uh, vote soon and vote often. Vote early, vote often. Yeah, of course. So, uh, okay, so what do we, so what can we do for Rooker, Justin? I want to make this worth his while. Should we start a hashtag for everyone to talk up Call of the Dead or just tell people to get off your ass and buy the best map pack? Well, listen, Brian, why don't we just do what we already get paid for? What? Write an ad? Um, let's do an ad right now. Okay, all right. All right, so here we go, Brian. Justin. No, 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 no. Here, no. We're gonna do. We're gonna do it. Um, we're gonna do it. Uh, uh, commercial style. Oh, oh, I got you. All right, here you go. Ring, 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 ring. Hello. Hello. Wait, why did you say hello? You called me. Hi, Brian. What are you doing? <laughs> me? I'm. I'm saying. I don't. You just called me and then said hello, and now you're talking in this weird, like, fake, cartoony advertisement voice. Playing Call of Duty, huh? No, wait. I don't. I don't even have Call of Duty. That's like that's a console game. I I'm a PC kind of guy. Have you downloaded that hot new map pack, Call of the Dead? Why are you even talking this way? This is the weirdest conversation I've ever had with you. You know, it features Danny Trejo, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Robert England, and of course, your favorite actor and mine, Michael Rooker. Wait, are. You are you doing an ad again? Are you doing that thing where you call me and you pretend like you're recording an ad? <laughs> Good one. It also features legendary director George Romero. He's the big bad. You're, you're going to keep on doing it. No matter what I say, you're just going to keep on doing the advertising. I'm so <laughs> glad. That's why I'm going to go run out and buy Call of the Dead, the map pack for Call of Duty Black Ops. Anyway, Brian... Bye. I killed your dog. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. Now what can I do? <laughs> All right. So, so what? Uh, what are some things? What, what's a quote we could get from Rooker about about the Night Attack album? I what prefer a threat. A threat. If you can just threaten people. If you can just do something that you know, something very threatening and menacing that basically just ends with um, uh, by Night Attack the debut comedy album from Justin Robert Young and Brian Brushwood on Amazon. Okay, that's too much, okay? That's a mouthful. Okay, I'll <laughs> like say, my night attack, okay? Uh, my, my night my, attack my, on my Amazon. Son, my son and my, uh, my, my son's friend, okay? <laughs> guy with the weird spiky hair. Uh, if you don't, I will strangle you with my uh, iPhone 4 earpiece. Yeah. That, that's done. That's that's all we need. That's all we need. Buy 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 this comedy album that my son <laughs> and my son's spiky haired friend made, or I'll strangle you with this iPhone 4 earpiece. That is a, that's gonna be our box art for the <laughs> sequel. Dark Knight that's Attack Boxes is what it's gonna be right there. Uh, by the way, we already have early box art on the complete uh, adventures. I don't know. Can we cut over to that, Chad? Uh, they're posting it like crazy and unfiltered. If we can take a look, look at the students passing by back, back behind you there. Yeah, oh, I no, used to wear a shirt like that one guy had, the green striped one. Green striped? <laughs> I, 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 I didn't on know that shirts came shirt back. <laughs> That's still in style? Like this, like this, right there. Yeah. Where'd this you is, buy this is a real life student from Rowan <laughs> University. No? No. no. Graduate. This is a grad. All right, get the hell out of here. <laughs> Shut up. Yes. When, Mike, when Brian says you're a student, you shut up and say, yes, I am. Yes. <laughs> you shout e equals MC squared. <laughs> you simply subdivide the cosine by the square. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, yes, there it is. Merle and the beef. Very, <laughs> uh, Merle apparently riding a gigantic beaver through the countryside. <laughs> what the hell is he doing with the beaver? I don't know. <laughs> I think he's riding him. It looks, it looks like he's bad. riding him into battle. That looks a bit perverted, guys. I don't know if I want to try that. 
Uh, well, look, you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. And we can't say, like, it's been a long time since Merle found himself with a lady when he's running around. I got to imagine that the people yeah, starts looking really good. Little beaver tail. Is that true? <laughs> uh, yeah, they say, uh, they say, once you go beaver, you'll never leave her, is uh, the old saying. <laughs> In the That's world another of one of those old Chicago sayings. <laughs> That's an old Chicago saying right there. Uh, well, I'll, okay. I'll tell you what. Oh, go ahead. Um, listen, Brian, uh, you know what another good Chicago saying is? What? Uh, what? Don't Should separate have. your DVD and streaming business. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, that's, 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 is that an old saying? It's an old, that's actually an old Algonquin saying. And that means <laughs> Don't that if, you, if you have that's a direct-to-mail... That's, that's an old Wisconsin saying. Yeah, okay, exactly. If, 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 you, if you have a service where you send DVDs to people's houses and you stream uh, uh, movies to their, and TV shows to their Xboxes and Apple TVs and computers... Uh, don't separate it. Want to know why? See, because... now this is weird that you would bring this up because our sponsor, Netflix, like just tried that the other day. Did you know about this? Like Netflix, no, listen, they're all like, we're going to do Number one, that's a rumor. What? That's a rumor. That didn't happen. No, no, it's, it's been, we've been reporting it on all of the news. It's, it's, it, they were going to call it Quickster, and nobody all liked right, it. And then listen, listen, you want to harass it. me on this? I'll tell you the real scoop, okay? okay I've got right. an inside line. They tried to separate oh. it but they're haunted and they keep coming back together. Okay. They, keep the, the, they, they keep mending together. You know, they can't keep them away. So what that's why that? Netflix, if you've heard some crazy rumor that it's gonna be Quickster and there are gonna be two separate websites, uh-uh, not anymore. Because of magic and a gypsy curse that was put on the two companies, two hey, arms of the company back in 1865 when a big wheeled uh, a cart ran over the foot of Esmeralda. Uh, they are never going to separate, and you don't have to worry about having two separate websites to manage dude, your direct dude, to mail and your streaming service. Thing, here's the thing: everybody right now is at home, like you're making this up, just Robert Young. There was no gypsy curse. None of this is true. We have the proof. If you go to Netflix.com/slash/twit, go ahead and try to get some DVDs and try to get some streaming and see for yourself whether or not they form together like uh, like the ooze, like uh, like um, uh, the T-1000 of Gypsy Curses. Uh, just head on over there. You get 30 days free. You can download thousands of streaming titles. You can watch them instantly on your iPhone, your iPad, your Xbox, your PS3, all those, all them devices are crazy. to play movies on them now. And, uh, that was and actually Esmeralda's last name was T1000. It was Esmeralda T1000 that um, got, her, got her foot run over and she said, forever binded, your DVDs and streaming services. Ah! And ever since then, there's you know, no try as they might, they cannot separate it. Folks, in all seriousness, Netflix.com is the best thing on earth. I use it every single night and it is the best company ever. I don't care. Um, uh, you know, what they do, I will never not be a, a customer of it. And you should not go another day if you are not subscribed to Netflix. You're living in a cursed life that you need to rectify immediately. Uh, watch <laughs> Walking Dead. Walking Dead is streaming on Netflix. Uh, and so if you have not seen it and you're an idiot for not seeing it up till now, you can see the first season and all of uh, Rooker's awesomeness. And, uh, and then watch the new season premiere, which... Rooker is plugging, even though he may or may not be on it. Mm. Uh, hey, man, we are almost out of time. I'm about to have to go on stage. We actually do have a music guest. We pre-recorded it last night. Alex Brubaker joins us. We're going to jump over and see some of his yes. music. Well, first, we got to yeah. thank Michael Rooker for hanging out with us. What can people do besides buy Call of the Dead that would make your day wonderful, Daddy Rooker? You know what they can do is uh, watch uh, The Walking Dead's Second season Never premiere heard. on the 16th, my friend. The beginning of AMC's Fright Fest week, two weeks. I don't know how long it lasts, but it's <laughs> the uh, premiere and it starts on the 16th. And go and enjoy. Have a good time. Awesome. Uh, and then, of and course, of course, follow at Michael Rooker 
on uh, on on Twitter. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, follow me at Michael Michael underscore Rooker. Follow uh, and go and check out my website, uh, Michael Online Rooker. And uh, of course, I have some Facebook uh, pages, and you can go on there. And one's a big fan page. You can, that's more interesting than the one I have. The one I have has been taken over by uh, weirdo zombie alien <laughs> creatures. You know. So. <laughs> <laughs> you got to you got to use Squarespace to clear that up. And of course, yeah. uh, don't forget my night attack or Michael Ricker will personally kill you with his iPhone 4 headset. Uh, okay, so uh, I guess we'll toss over to a time machine. And no, 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 Brian, Brian, Brian. How about um, I change my shirt really, really quick. You run into another room and change your shirt, and uh, we'll go right live right now to uh, Alex uh, Brubaker. Okay, so when you edit this, only edit out like like just the 10 second it takes to me to get the other room, and we'll go right now to the other room where I have Alex Brubaker right now. Yes. Okay. Bye, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to a, a very talented young man. He plays the guitar and he sings with his mouth. We like to call him Mouth Guitar. Mouth Guitar, come on out. Uh, all right, here's the deal, guys. Uh, no kidding. I met Alex last night when I was performing live at Albrecht, uh, Albrecht College. I almost said Albrecht, like Alex Albrecht. But uh, he was a volunteer for one of the uh, routines, and it turns out that uh, that that he's I'm friends. I'm not going to spray you like John. a skunk and come up closer to the computer. You don't need to be well, in no, the no, corner. He's got, like, look, like he's, a... he's got this whole he's got this whole gear set up. Look at this. Oh business. Jesus! Oh, okay, he's got, all right. He's got loops and distorters and all kinds of stuff. I, I just thought that he was in the corner, like like some sort of baroque chamber music performer. Oh yeah, no, he's very, he's very, he's very scared of you and your well, sound. Well, my lady, I will sing. All right, so uh, real quick, uh, uh, Alex, how long have you been playing guitar, and what do you describe your style as? Because this is like crazy industrial techno stuff I'm seeing here. Um, I've been playing for about ten years. Um, I most closely relate my stuff to percussive finger style. It's like August Rush, if you've seen that, or uh, Andy McKee, some of those guys. Um, but it's a lot of really experimental stuff. As you could tell, like my pedal board is kind of ridiculous. And let me get that again, actually. We'll jump this over right here. There we go. And so you have how many modules in there? Um, there's like eight or ten different things going on. There's like eight or ten different things going on. Um, yeah, probably not that many. Two, four, six. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. There. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, here's what I'm gonna do. What? And, and you just. Uh, you have a, a a new album that you just that just came out. Um, not new. It was 2009, late 2009. But you have an old album that you're gonna play. Way from? to sell it, kiddo. Yeah. And and and, and there will be some new stuff too because I desperately need to get back into the studio. So depending on how much time that I've got. Yeah, well, what, what, are you, what are you gonna play for us? Uh, this first one's gonna be yeah, a song called Ice Mountain, and it, it doesn't use too much of that, but then we'll get there. Okay, awesome. Well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna set this up. I'm gonna. Uh, you guys in the chat room will have to let us know if if you're receiving this okay, but I'm gonna try to set this up so we get as much action as possible. Here we go.
Thank you very, very much. What was that called again? Brew Baker. Or Brew Baker. Oh, Brew Baker. I like it. He's trying to toughen up your image is what it is. He's trying to give you a gangster image with Brew Breaker. You break all the brews. Uh, and we're yes. recording all this alone, so we'll be able to get the good quality in there for sure. Uh, dude, fantastic. Uh, dude, I, I don't even know. This will be kind of weird. We're just going to drop this segment in in the middle of our awesome Night Attack after party. What do you say, Justin? Uh... I say, yes, we are going to drop this in to our weird night attack after party. Uh, okay, uh, so, so uh, Alex, what else? What else? What else? Uh, do you got anything else you want to plug? Is there, could be, where, where can people get your album? Um, iTunes, Amazon as well, um, CD Baby, and I've got a website, uh, alexbrewbakersguitar.com, so you can find out all sorts of stuff there. Um, I blog fairly often, uh, music-related things uh, and the like. They can be found through the website as well. So, awesome. Dude, well, thank you so much, Alex. Here, you want to play us out? All right, here we go.
Awesome. Now I'm sure I'm sure we got all kinds of uh, Skype Skype uh, artifacting on there, but like sitting there right next to the amp, uh, it creates like some seriously spooky soundscapes. I really enjoyed that, dude. No, uh, I, I seriously I, listen. I've never regretted taking acid more than I do right now, <laughs> having listened to Alex Brubaker. Uh, folks, everybody head out to Amazon, pick up his album. A lot of you were saying this is the album I want to write code to. This is the album I want to make love to a clown to. And yes, the soundtrack to our lives is authored by Alex Brubaker. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Uh, that about wraps it up for this edition of NSFW. Uh, good night, America. Thank you for my night attack. show is through and it breaks my heart because I just can't bear to be apart from Brian and Justin of NSFW. Oh, I'd rather die in a fire than to spend a single moment without Brian Brushwood Oh, I'd rather be dipped in honey and fed to a big ant pile than to do without Justin Robert Young for even a little while Oh, NSFW I love you Awesome. Thank you so much, Rooker. We'll, we'll cut you loose. We'll just do the wrap-ups here. Uh, thank you a million times over, dude. Thank you for being flexible and so cool with the scheduling conflict. Uh, you are the best person who ever lived. <laughs> you guys are awesome. I'm really proud to have you two as uh, part of the Rooker clan. <laughs> <laughs> and we are very, very, very proud to be there. By the way, everybody, uh, if you have not... Rooker and the Beeb. Yes. Look. There we go. Rooker and the Beeb.